This podcast may contain views and opinions which are those of the hosts and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of any local agency, organization, union, employee, or company, including the podcast. All right. Welcome back to Off the Clock Shop Talk. Obviously, I'm back, right? Oh, um, fucking time. I know, right? So uh, everyone was complaining. I Apparently, I had a family event that I wasn't allowed to go to. But anyways, um, let's start the show. Right? Um, just uh, cheers. Cheers, everybody, to our cheers. guest. Yeah. Why don't you bring him in? Before we cheers. Secret guest. Bring him in. Cheers first. Bring him in. Yeah. So, introduce our special guest for the week since, uh, fuck Samas. Fuck Samas. Anyways, uh, our special guest for the week, Joseph Martinez. Joseph. Morning, morning, guys. Morning. Uh, so, let's get into the show. Honestly, let's, uh, let's, let's start it off. Okay. Um, welcome. Welcome back. Um, thank you for obviously tuning in. We, we appreciate all the views. All the comments, obviously, we're, you know, we uh, we want more. Keep keep sharing. Mm-hmm. What what this podcast is really? I mean, we, we need you guys. That to last share. that last beer really affected you. So. <laughs> <laughs> me? Yeah. me personally, I'm just saying oh. you, you introduced twice, and like you're like, <laughs> and, and, and don't forget to like and um, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> okay, apparently the last beer and the last shot got to me. Whatever. Yeah. Anyways. Um, just, uh, you know, we, we appreciate it, but, uh, we wanted to jump right into it. Um, welcome Joseph. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Glad to be here. Thank you Um, for the invite. Uh, let's, let's get into it. So a little bit more about, about yourself, you know, let us know a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Tell us the barn you come out of and the uh, position. What do you do? Position. Been with company just passing four years as of the 13th of this month. And two years in the warehouse, and I'm currently a package driver for a Tustin Center. You RPCD or uh, 224? 224. I'm a 224. So okay. UPS out of Anaheim. Yep, right out of nice. Anaheim, and I am head Drink of the... Drink to that is there where we, we came go. from. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Cheers, guys. All right, cheers seriously. to that mm-hmm. fucking black hole. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love it. I love driving. I'm happy ever since I got the opportunity. And even with joining UPS all together, I mean, I've, I think, I've applied two times. Prior to that, really? But, yeah. what, what time of year did you apply? September, yeah. August. Okay, like, so in the fall. Yeah, in the fall. Okay, and even like the second attempt, about the same time. I think it was actually around okay. peak. But then I had an orientation, and they told me that, uh, like, oh, come back, and then we'll see what happens, and then nothing. Really? And then yeah, third oh. time around, you know, three strikes, and I <laughs> got the yeah. job, and it was like seven <laughs> years later, and here I am, but. Um, so you've been yeah. trying to work there for almost seven years. Oh yeah, pretty really? Much. Wow, really? Yeah, but during that time, I've just did been, you did you have any friends that worked there at all, or you nah. were just you were just like, hey, it's a good union gig. Nah, no. Nah. Well, I'm I've gonna tell one. you, you yeah. you kind of struck a gold mine. I mean, I got in. You didn't miss anything. I got in right when I was I was actually still in high school when I when I started. Were you right? <laughs> still in high school when I started? Damn. Yeah, I wished. <laughs> I didn't have a first period, so back then we started at two a.m. Like all the time, two yeah. to two fifteen. Yeah, you know that was normal. That was the norm. Time. That was the norm then. So I would go do my thing, and I got off by like seven thirty ish. Just home, in time to make shower. your first class. Yeah, went home, <laughs> took a shower, and fucking went to school. Yeah, but you didn't miss anything. You were and, the fucking cool kid with a job. Four years, two years. You're you're full time. Like that's insane. You know, yeah. We, me and George came out of a class. You know, and I talk about a class, right? But just like a a time frame where. I mean, they told us 10, seven, it was seven, seven to, 10 seven years to 10 years to, to become a driver. Time. Yep. And then it was 20 years to go oh, feeder. Oh, and now to, they told us 20 to 25 yeah. when I got started. I'm not even joking. Uh, not even joking. Yeah. So that was real. I did, <laughs> I did 10 years in, in the hub, believe it or not, part time. So yeah, congrats. No, congratulations cheers to on that. that. Yeah, cheers no, on that. I'm, cheers I'm on grateful that. for that. Like I really am. No, you know, it, and I think most of is. that is just because of COVID. Like, I know, like, when COVID struck, the building really wanted drivers. Like, it was, the oh, process yeah. sped up so incredibly fast. In- yeah. And yeah. I couldn't believe that. They were like, oh, Joseph Martinez, like, you're next. You want to be a driver? I'm like, what? Like, it's only been like not even two years. And here I am. You're like, fuck and, you, I'll no, take that money. That's, that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they didn't even, yeah, and they didn't even do any of the classes. Like, the, um, 
What what's the training course that everyone goes to? Like you have to go to like another building to like. Well, that, that, no, they, that's they, a little they, bit they different. They actually start that, yeah. believe it or not. For you know, they actually kind of started that recently. It's Integrad. Integrad. Yeah. Go there we go. Yeah. Yeah. So when we started, that wasn't for us. We did, was didn't, no didn't have that. We didn't. There was no training at an outside facility somewhere else. I mean, if you did, you would train usually within the jurisdiction or it was usually or the somewhere Cer- close. It was right. a Cerritos building normally. No, yeah, I, you know, I, I believe it or not, I trained at Main Street. Oh wow! Really? So I went to Main Street. Oh wow! I trained there, which has a, an excellent cafeteria, by the way. So <laughs> they got a cafeteria. Dude, so check this out. So I go to Main. We Street. We had a break. We had a break room with dude, bullshit. No, no, no. Check this out. They're like, so, would you like an egg salad sandwich? It's been <laughs> sitting here all week. I <laughs> I went to Main Street, no joke, and we go to this cafeteria, and I'm like, is this like the fucking executive cafeteria? What the fuck is going on? So we're in there, and they have a cook, a chef, an old. Uh, it was what? an old Mexican lady at the time, yeah. and she's like, oh, you want a breakfast burrito? And I'm like. What? Fuck yeah, I want one of those. <laughs> Fuck yeah, I want a breakfast burrito. <laughs> what are you talking about? So, yeah. I'm used to eating Cheez-Its and Dr. Street. Pepper yeah. for my fucking lunch. It was pretty cool. They had, you know, they have a uh, obviously a cook there. and That's uh, cool, it was, man. It was uh, interesting. So I did my training there. That's when I went cover driving. Right? Okay. So I went cover driving. Believe it or not, it was kind of like the same as you. I went cover driving at two and a half years. Yeah. Um, so I started in 02, I think 05, I think I was cover driving. You were bouncing back time, and forth, though. But at that time, yeah. you know, as soon as I passed the class, I'd quit a second job that I had because I, I've always yeah. been a worker, right? So I quit the second job that I had, and they said, oh, well, we don't need you for about a month, a month and a half, maybe two months. And I'm like, wait, I just quit my second job. Yeah. Is and so now they're sending you back to the building? Yeah, I got to go back to the building to only work part-time yeah. when I had another full-time job. I was actually, at the time, I was working for uh, Ford, I believe. I was working for oh, Ford. Oh, shit. Um, so, I just... You're selling cars? No, no, fuck. No, <laughs> dude. I was actually, uh, I like did... You, uh, I'm like, how could you... I think what they called it was a what porter. Kind of, what kind of person are you to sell someone such a no, shitty car? No. <laughs> I, I was a porter at the uh, time, and choice. I uh, <laughs> I did dealer trades. So, believe it or not, oh, I got to wow. drive like, all kinds of different cars. I would drive... All over the place to San Diego to trade cars, and I don't know if you guys know. So you this, gave up that gig to go driving? Yes. <laughs> to go cover yeah. driving. No. I, I don't that know if up. that's a win. Or <laughs> no, no, <laughs> it was a fucking loss. What was, sure. Okay, really quick. So while, while we're on topic, what was the nicest car you drove Ooh. for Ford? Please tell that me. Is a good please question. tell me you drove a GT40. No. So fuck. Believe ah. it, we, we had one. That, he lost. He so lost check right this there. out. So we had one. And I'm going to go to lunch, guys, and just (laughs) take the the GT40. So I I drove an an 03 Cobra, an 06 Cobra. Um, I got to drive a bunch of stuff. Those are aggressive. No joke. I I drove the the Cobras did scare me a little bit. I'm not going to lie. I've I've, I've, I've been in an 06 Cobra, actually. they were both stick. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, this thing is fucking... Yeah. I mean, this thing is fucking. It, this moving. is the real deal. Yeah. That's the that's the shit there. Um, apparently, I broke one of the rear differentials on one of them, and the sales manager was super pissed at me. But I didn't feel it. I mean, I, he's all fire me. I'm gonna quit anyways. Me. Yeah, it, drove <laughs> it worked. It still drove. <laughs> anyways, so so I, I gave up that job, went full time, or excuse me, went cover driver. They said they didn't meet, need me for a while. At that time, cover drivers went back and forth. They were really used, utilized more. Per the the language, I mean, the yeah. language considers them part time employees. You know, you cover people that are on vacation and whatnot. Yeah. Um, now I know they use them and they use them all year, basically. Yeah. Right? I mean, they Even utilize now. them more like a twenty two four. Like they they yeah. expect them to be there. Yeah. And then there's that one there's that one month. It's usually like in fall where they just send all the cover drivers back to the fucking building. Yeah. But other other than that, I they utilize them all year, <laughs> all year. Yep. So yeah. kind of crazy, right? But um, so I did that, um, and then I got to drive some cool cars. They had a GT. Back to your question, right? They had a GT. They brought it in. Fucking beautiful. Hundred and seventy. Wait, was hundred seventy three thousand? Mm. I think they wanted at the time. I think uh, today that's probably that's probably like five hundred k. Oh, no joke. Yeah. Guaranteed. No yeah. joke. Some guy came in, wrote a check for it. Some yeah, dude, they do that. 
And I was like, how are you going to fit in this? This, guy's, this guy was like 6'5". Oh, shit. Oh, my god, Tall, skinny guy. And I'm like, fuck, dude, how are you going to fit in this fucking car? How are you going to fit in this anyways, shit, you lanky he, motherfucker? He it, <laughs> yeah. and, he no, gas, no and I got to go gas up all the cars because we didn't have gas oh, pumps cool. on site, right? So I got to oh, go you guys gas didn't up have all a, the cars. You guys didn't have a pump on site? No, we would have... We really? Had, we would take the business card and go fill up the cars. Oh. I would because oh, wow. I was the porter, right? So, oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm like, fuck yes, dude. I got to drive <laughs> this fucking car. My, the sales manager was like, fuck no, you don't get to drive <laughs> He's car. like, remember that differential you broke <laughs> last week? <laughs> so he was like, that. No, no, no. He was like, fuck no, you're not driving that car. So I'm like, fuck, that sucks. But yeah. anyways, the nicest car I drove was probably... The uh, I, I thought the 03 was a little bit nicer than the 06. 06 Cobra. Um, I got to drive a bunch of stuff though. I That's mean, cool as fuck. At the time, I think. The did you get to drive any Lightnings? Those are incredible. Those are incredibly rare. I did. Yeah. Believe it or not. And those are like the to, best truck that Ford has ever produced. I got to drive the Lightning. Um, that was that was pretty interesting. I dr- I got to drive their turbo diesel, which was cool. Oh word. Yeah. That was, nice. I mean, I got to drive nice. that. Um. I drove a bunch of different stuff, and they and they would trade used cars too. Mm-hmm. Believe it or not, so mm-hmm. I would mm-hmm. uh, I got to drive a 350Z, which was at the time was really popular. Oh, right. so fucking they, the, uh, Nissan, yeah, yeah Nissan 350Z, 350Z, yeah. So I get the to drive fair one of lady, those. The fair lady. That one, and even the Cobras, dude. The the cockpit, as they called it, was super tiny. Mm. I barely fit. Yeah, I mean, you guys that's know, the one man, thing that are like. Guy. I don't like Fords specifically for that reason. The cockpit is so small. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I drive a Honda tiny. Civic, and I still feel small in that. I'm like, I can imagine switching from that to that. I'm like, nope, well, no, no. I'm, no. I'm so good. what's funny is that, believe it or not, at the time I drove a Honda Civic, a mm. Honda Civic EX. It was a '99, I think, and coupe or hatchback. Uh, coupe. Coupe. Yeah, I drove. I, you know, uh, Honda Civic or Honda was kind of like my thing for a while. I was, Same. I was into racing mm. cars, but I didn't have any money, so I was like, oh, "So you're like, I'll Honda take, Civic. I'll, I'll take this two thousand dollar car and race the fuck out of it." Yeah, so I had a about right. I had a Ford, about right. You know, I had a couple of those, but I know how to install a cold air intake. We can do this. <laughs> cold air intake, headers, and exhaust. That there was the thing. Yeah. I chipped it. You know, I, I was. I, I like how that's the go-to for people who think they they know how to race. Cool. <laughs> I did. I thought I was totally cool. Especially but anyways, right? So um, I, I got to drive. That 350Z and a couple other cool cars, but and I, you know, I go uh, cover driver and then went back and actually drove cover for a tiny bit of time while I was looking for another job, and then got another job and then worked that job for seven years while I waited to go full time. Wow! And I went full time in Laguna, so mm. that's when I started in Co Center and then transferred back to Anaheim. Yeah. So, anyways. Um, Enough about myself, but you, I know right? we got we got a lot so. out of you for that. <laughs> <laughs> we were way was, off topic. I think it was a shot. I think the shot helped him. Way off topic. <laughs> no, I mean same thing. I mean even when when I went cover driving, um, like I said, when COVID hit, uh, that sped up the process a lot. And we had drivers retiring, we had drivers leaving, or we had tr- drivers transferring out, and that just sped up the process for about like I think five six of our drivers, including me, and then. Yeah. When our senior manager, he just asked us, hey, uh, do you want to switch that to 224? Asshole. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, I know who you're talking about. <laughs> it's like, you guys want like, hey, to switch buddy, to... would you like less, you're ever would you like this, less money way, and no rights in the long run? That guy. Yeah, of course <laughs> 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 Yeah, but he's like, you want to switch? I'm like, yes, I want to switch to full-time. Like, are you kidding me? Like, no. They don't tell you anything about the downsides. They're yeah, just like, would you like, like yeah, to be Tuesday full-time? Tuesday through Saturday, like... Yeah. Whatever, but I well, mean, that's not even a downside. I don't even think the Tuesday to Saturday part is is a, is a downside. I think the downside is that for one, you can't you can't make what the the regular RPCDs make, so you're not going to make top rate. Yeah. For the same job, you also for the same job, you're can't also bid. not going to you can't bid on yeah. anything, yeah. right? You have no rights. You have no eight can't hour do eight request, hours. Yeah, nothing. So they're just like, hey, just get behind this truck and drive until we tell you to not Tuesday drive. through Saturday. Just get behind Tuesday through and Saturday. And I will say that's one of the reasons, uh, or if not the main reason, why. Sean O'Brien is gonna push for no t- no more twenty two fours. Yeah, right? they should all be R- RPCDs. They should be RPCDs. You guys do the same job. Cover drivers are obviously a little bit different. There's actually even a built in penalty within the contract that says if you use a cover driver over one hundred and fifty six punches for the year, right. that you are owed an RPCD position because you're not staffed. Yeah, there's language mm-hmm. right. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the language for the cover drivers is a lot different. You know, they. Um, 
are supposed to be used to cover vacations and FMLAs and that kind of shit, right? Right. That's um, when I. That's what I did. The oh, language yeah. for twenty two fours is not that. It's or excuse me, the language for covers is not that. It's more of you. You should just be covering the twenty two four language is is a full time job that just gets paid less, has no rights. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's. It's everything the company was looking for to make record profits. And they did. Really is. And they still are. Yeah, they definitely So this still is are. here's here's if you're a twenty two four driver and anytime they ask you to come in, make sure you work your rate because it's obviously hundred percent double time and stick it to them. Don't right. make them don't make them fucking hassle you to come in, right? And threaten you fucking pun or threaten punishment for you not coming in on Monday and then be like, nah, we don't need you to go home. Right, because we them. make them every two, make two, them, two make four, them pay, make them including pay, including myself. You know, I'm a two two four. And every two two four has the right to say no on a Monday. Like it's yeah. it's not right it's for it is your to feel off. any pressure to yeah. like, it is your say no. Off. Yeah, you have the right, and I hear it almost every every week. This is on a weekly basis. Like, oh, I'm feeling pressure. Like this is just from other drivers. And it's like no, like I say no sometimes. Like I got stuff to do. And no, for sure. If you have stuff to do, go do it. Like, yeah. yeah, work that Saturday. You don't like, need to sucks. be there. You don't uh, need to be there on Monday. Exactly. Yes. Like, yeah, the money's good. Uh, uh, like, if you want to do it for the money, do it for the money. But do yeah. n- never feel pressure to just say no. Yeah. That's know? great. Yes. Which never is, feel the pressure. I mean, the way I look, you know, when I finally made RPCD, which it, it really is the way I looked at Saturdays. Yeah. Like, it was there if I wanted to make the money. Exactly. Right? If so, apologize for the tangent, but continue about your story. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> I, I, honestly, like, I was just like, man, two years, you go. That's so time? good, man. That's, that's awesome. Dude. Yeah. That's so congrats good. because it just wasn't like that for us. It yeah. No, wasn't. I hear It's all never the been time, a better time, yeah. All the time from you veteran drivers. Like, every, every driver above me. I don't care if they're a day over me. Like, I consider them a veteran driver. Like, that's just how I see things. And I get a lot of knowledge out of you guys. Again, all of a lot of knowledge out of you guys and ladies out there. I know there are the ladies. There are and, a uh, exactly. So I much appreciated from everything. Cheers I've to learned. the ladies. Yeah, seriously. Like cheers to ladies. Cheers to the ladies. Everyone. Out you know who you are. You are. Mm-hmm. Mukai, yeah. Nashdown. Exactly. Those guys. Yeah. I'm, I'm very grateful to for this opportunity to be sped up as fast. I didn't expect to be a driver in two years, four years. Hey, you and know, I, and I don't as as of. I hate to say it because it's weird. You know, I was at the company for 20 years, whatever. But as a veteran driver, I guess, um, I don't look down on you for that. I, I embrace no, that you embrace got a, it. a great yeah. opportunity. and You took it. And, and to be honest, you're, you're a great driver. You're, you put uh, in the time. You put in the effort. I love my work. And, and I you really showed do. that. We um, shouldn't be upset at the opportunities that these people, that, you know, the others, younger others other get, get yeah. as, long as, they, as long as their performance is good. That's all that matters. If yeah. they get an opportunity, great. That's that's fantastic because no, I mean, awesome. the company they need the help. Exactly. You know, it, it, the wait shouldn't be seven years. That's absurd. Yeah. Uh, it really is. You it's know, absurd. Uh, when I think back on it, and I'm like, that's why. Believe it or not, that's why I call it a black hole. And I think a lot of people at the time took the job, and this is just from my own experience. Took the job, and I did as well as. Hey, I'm going to do this job while I go to college right. or while I do this, while I get my career set. And it, it did become a career and I'm thankful to UPS, you know, and more so the Teamsters, right. That mm-hmm. kind of fought for all these things before me, but I, I'm thankful for those things that um, I was given the opportunity and, you know, I was able to buy a house, you know, raise a family, right. um, you know, just, just all those things that, that you get to do that, that you're afforded. As you know, if you treat UPS as a career, for you, I I'm, honestly, I'm just, I'm just grateful that you got to, you, you got ahead. That's, right. that's awesome. No, I'm, I mean, every day is something different, right? And like, even, even for me, I had, I had an uncle who was in UPS. He was a UPS driver for really? over 15 years, to my knowledge. And uh, what the. Uh what he building? was in Ontario, actually. Ontario? Yeah, he was okay. in Ontario. Okay. But he passed about five years ago. Oh, sorry so about that. No, it's thank you. Thank you very much. But um, every day I work in UPS, I think of him. And I just think of all the things that, like, I'm learning. And, you know, my dad is always telling me that whenever I share something, like an update with the Teamsters or uh, myself or what I'm learning or what, what opportunities I'm, like, 
gaining out of the time I've been here. Um, he's he's always referring to my uncle like he, your uncle was the same way. Like he always took those opportunities. Like if you have something new to learn, like he always took it. If you're looking out for the drivers, that's what he did. And it, it feels great knowing I have a bloodline that was pretty much in that same scenario. Pictures. Yeah, and it's just overall, it's it feels great, and that's why I, as much as I hear other drivers want to complain about their work, that it's it's just yeah, just get get through it. Like yeah, I have a day or two, like a bad day. You know what? What driver doesn't have a that's, bad day? Most of the days are gonna be bad. Yeah, but then it's when just, you get those the, good days, well, it's yeah, like, I really do. I really do think it's a mindset, and you. I feel like I a lot of drivers that. fuck themselves before they even get to their truck. <laughs> yeah. And that's kind of the and, issue. And that's you know? the thing. Like, when they get to their truck, when they see it and they're like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Like, I have those days. Much, much yeah. more Everybody than, does. yeah. But, it's but a, it I, is I have it is. to say, I, and this is just coming from me, dude. Like, you have always been uh, cheery or, you yeah. know, like, you've always had a positive attitude is really yeah. what it is. Yeah. And yeah. that's why I think I, I gravitate towards you so much. I mean, even when I was in the building, like, we got along great. It's because I want to I want to surround myself with people that have a good outlook and a good attitude. I've been around those drivers that every day is like, they're just like every day is a fucking grind. Yeah. Every day. You know what yeah. I mean? And it is. It is. You know, being a driver. We all know those is. drivers. Those, yeah. 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 You get to your truck drivers. sometimes. You might be in a good mood, and then you look at your truck and it's fucking blown out, and whatever. You know, those days, believe it or not, I would look at my truck and I'd be like, hey. I have 14 hours to do this. If I can't get it done, I can't get it done. Yeah, exactly. There's no way. Uh, like, what I, am I I've gotten those days. my own yeah. day for it. Exactly. Yeah. But people, like they, I said, they, you, you've always they been fucked themselves super up that way, yeah. positive. Um, and I really try my best. Let's talk a little bit more. You, you know, you said you like to seize opportunities, right? Right. Um, no, even when I started UPS, you know, I was in preload. I started out as preload uh, on a pen eight. And then I moved to Pen 7, and then I moved to Pen 12. And from there, that's where I stayed. And I think because they liked where I was at, and it was on drop 6. So were you loading for Huntington, or were you loading for Tustin? Tustin. Because okay. I was yeah. loading Kane Waldron's truck. Oh, and, shit. And when okay. Brian G was next to him. Yeah. And yeah. That, was, that was one heck of a drop. Yeah. You know, I'll boys, tell you that. Dude, but, like yeah, with Kane's 400 pieces, like 500 <laughs> pieces a day, like, that was something. If you were loading Kane's truck. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, even Brian's truck at the time, who I did, yeah. he, he had taken. When he had Rico. <laughs> yeah, he had taken Phil Rivera's route, right? Yeah. So, like, that was a, <laughs> that was a tough route. Dude. Yeah. What and happened with Rico, by the way, since that was, like, the bit, one of the, like, the largest, like. It moving, was. Right? They, they moved, right? Moving. Yeah. I and, believe okay. they moved. Yeah. And uh, now you go by the 55 and their whole building is gone. Yeah. Like it's all just oh, dirt. Oh, is it? It's all okay. dirt. Because I remember, wow. I, know, I remember drivers. I don't know what's got to be built there now. Drivers would fight over insane. that pickup. They're like, yeah. I want that shit because like it, it pays a fuck ton. It's it's yeah. huge. Like I did yeah. his route a few times. Well, I'm I mean, like, I know Whoa. before when I was a young driver, they would you know when you didn't have when I didn't have a route, they would I would sit on that a lot because you go and deliver that. Well, you go as a driver in your truck and then you go unload a trailer for them. Yeah. Right. You go yeah. unload the Rico trailer. And you mm. get paid for like fourteen hundred pieces. Yeah. Oh it was, wow. Yeah, you it was a lot. unload a whole shorty. That's why they were fucking the fun. Okay. And you just do 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 do. You scan yeah. everything. So yeah. it would take a couple hours, you know. And it was it was nice. It was. That's a cool gig, actually. Yeah. I liked it. It was a nice way to start out the day. Yeah. You do your air. Right after your air, you'd go to Rico, go unload that trailer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was it was cool. That's I pretty laid back, it. actually. That's why. Right. And then I just sat on Pen 12 for the rest of my warehouse career. And then uh, opportunity-wise, I was able to driver help for Wadi uh, at the mall. So nice. I, was able well, to learn Wadi, the, yeah. I was able to learn the dyad that way. And even before I started driving, like, I, I knew how to work the dyad. And then I car parked uh, in the warehouse. So I oh, knew nice. how to drive before then. That's good. So I parked every single truck, every single Wally. And when it was time to go driving, it just... You had all, you had all the try. skill sets. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Shout out to Brian Watanabe. Yeah, who's seriously. Now in yeah. Texas. Love the dude, man. Right? Yeah. Got to go check him out next year. I already yeah. told him that. Yeah, you're going to go out and visit? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you yeah, go, let me know. I might, maybe I'll go with you. Shit. Yeah. No, I was, I've never been cool, Texas. Dude. And that, and that's, well, I'll, I'll go. And that's why I joined okay. the safe committee. Like, he showed me there's more than just being a driver. They're like, another opportunity wise, you know, you could be in the safety committee. You can look out for other drivers and, 
whatever concerns that may be floating around. And I, I, every day, you know, I always keep an open ear. I even talk to the rest of the committee and let them know like, Hey, there are drivers with concerns. I hear it on a weekly basis. Like, please keep an open ear. Uh, let me know. I'll really relay it back to management if I have to, but otherwise um, we'll just take it one-on-one and see how they're doing and just see what we can do with that. And it's, it's, it's really, especially around this time, you know, peaks here, mm-hmm. a lot of people are stressed, uh, high stress, time. high stress. Yeah, yeah, and high that stress. leads that possibly could lead to more accidents or injuries. So we just got to be aware of our sleep, of our eating habits, how much we hydrate and no matter what we're going through, like it, we, we, every one of us as an individual needs to keep ourselves on check. And including myself, you know, I'm no different. You know, I have to make sure I get my sleep. Um, yeah, if I if that means I don't get to see my family or friends less, then it's just what I have to do get to get for through the, peak the day. Season, right? Yeah, for peak. It's just a month. You know that like our center manager just told us it's four Mondays, five Saturdays, and that's it. So it's just if we, if yeah. you can make it, then you can do it another year. But it's yeah, just, it's not nearly as long as everyone. Thinks it is. Yeah, it's super well, it's short. Just, it's just such a high stress time. It is. It a high really stress is. Time. Even for the I warehouse did, people. I did a lot of peace. Oh yeah. Yeah. It yeah. is. I you I know, just got one of my friends into UPS and um she loads my truck for really? peak and then she's oh, my wow. driver helper so she goes out and I show her like Ooh. oh this is why you load my truck this way yeah it makes it so much easier you know and how it helps to load them it. understand yeah like why yeah. Th- why it's just so important to to load good and exactly you know, to kind of just be good at your job really yeah um yeah i proposed that the uh, drive the driver helper should be the actual preloaders yeah for, the, for that like, that drop so it's like exactly so you can kind of see how hey this is gonna affect this is my day how it affects the day yeah. when you load like shit yeah, like, yeah. exactly yeah. So exactly like, you know, yeah, especially just on take, the just take because i know doing. i yeah. know that the obviously that the the preload soups like they they have to get work done, right? So they, they're they on don't top know of anything. the, yeah, oh, fucking just, <laughs> yeah. just they're like, oh, do this, do this, and then they, you don't see them for five weeks, like, right? They don't teach, they don't teach the preloaders the proper methods that need to be, they really don't. taught. Like so I, I'm teaching my friend, my loader, stuff that the soups have not even <clears throat> touched a word on, and like, well, because they don't know exactly, either. and it's like the easiest thing though, like bad pals, like everyone should know what a bad pal is. Like mm-hmm. it's just the f- they don't okay, so they don't teach them that just literally across the they board. Don't. So in in the in the building that I'm in now, Laguna, like I came out of Anah- Anaheim, and we bad pals wasn't as big an issue. Well, it wasn't around, right? Well, because they would teach them to look at the pal and the tracking label, and sync them up. In this building, they don't they don't teach them that. They're like, yep. you look at the pal, and that and that's where it goes. Exactly. And I was like, wait, wait. This is like an upper management person. That's not the fucking preload soup. I was talking to like a lady that was like upper management. I, I don't, I don't remember her position. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wait, so you're telling me that they're not supposed to sync the tracking label with the PAL label? And she's, she's like, no, we're only teaching them to utilize the PAL label so that way they can speed up their day. And I'm like, but well, you're basically setting them up for failure because now they're. They, we could have she that that person can have five bad pals in their hand, yeah, and then just go into the truck and like, and they're and not sinking any of that stuff up. It's an extra hour to their day because of those bad pals. Exactly. And then I'm not gonna to go lie. To I'm gonna tell you guys. So I mean, even as a driver, like, so when you're sorting your car, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Everyone's telling you to rush, 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 but they want you to send in all your misloads by what I think. 2.30 or yeah. 3 or whatever. Wow. Whatever you're 3 saying, o'clock, I, I think, do, is right? when they want it in. So yeah. I would sort my truck, and I'd sort it by, by pal. I wouldn't yeah. even look. Because it, it does take an extra second. You add. I've always thought of UPS, especially as a driver, as a game of seconds. Yeah. Right? You A second saved here, you know, times 180, 200. Like, that's a lot of seconds. You know what I mean? You, no, you for add sure. those seconds For sure, up. for sure. Totally agree. Totally agree. So... I kind of just, when I would sort my truck, I would sort it by pal, and then, eh, I might find a bad pal later, you know, when yeah. I finally deliver, or maybe I might have a missed delivery because of bad pal. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to say I didn't, but, uh, you know, those are some of the things you learn 
especially as a loader. I fucking hated loading when I was <laughs> uh, when I was younger. I'm not gonna lie. My sleep schedule was so effed up because of preload hours. I was like, wow, how did I? Survive? The crazy like thing the is, the moment I went driving, I realized how bad my sleep schedule was. And, and the like, crazy wow, thing is that never that never really changes. Like it never. People say like, oh, you adjust to it after a few months. It's like no. <laughs> I did that shit for like almost ten years. Oh, yeah. are you talking you about no waking idea. up early? Fuck yeah. no. And that dude. never changes. Yeah. When does it ever change? When does it ever When is it natural you, to wake up at fucking say, one AM? Yeah, to wake up at one forty five in the morning. Especially for free though. Fuck no. Yeah, yeah it's the, like, yeah, especially sense. with George. He's out here drinking and shit at twelve, like I'm gonna be up in an hour and a half. <laughs> I've done that before. So have I. I've done that before and just like I was like drinking all day with my, my brother and his two friends and we're watching a movie and then I get a phone call and it's my uh, it's my ride to go to work. He's like, hey, I'm outside. Oh, fuck. And I'm like holding the beer and I'm like, cool. <laughs> all right, see you guys later. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. That's like, that's like a reality, sadly, for like most preloaders. Like they do what what they got to do like sometimes yeah. like just to survive. Those well, hours. you know, like, you I remember like being a splitter, uh, like high splitter, and I would be falling asleep while standing because of how tired I was. And I'm like, wow, this is really. It's no a tough joke. job. It's just, yeah. it's not a joke. Yeah. yeah. I'm like wow, that. That was the moment it hit me. I'm like, wow, this is like real stuff right here. I'm like, okay. This. And then like I remember the morning I got home, I slept for like 16 hours straight. This the that was that I've was Saturdays, yeah, right? That's why yeah, I, I mean, yeah. like Saturdays for me, I'll be like, yeah, yeah, I'm sleeping all day. Yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll hit you up, uh, you know, for I'll hit you up at night, and then we'll. <laughs> go when drinks. the sun's going down, <laughs> that's when I'll call yeah. you. <laughs> we'll see what happens. And that's why I told my like my my friend, and she's, you know, this is her very first peak, and very first peak being a preloader and a helper, and I don't think she realized how much time she's gonna. Have less to do Lose, stuff yeah. on your own personal time, like it's it's no joke. Like you are mm-hmm. here to work, and then the second you get off work, eat, shower, sleep, like that is your routine for the next month. Yeah, like, they have to, and that's not just her. Most of the driver helpers or preloaders have. What to time do you pick up your uh, your helper? Oh, what time do you pick her up? Out. You summer. drive her out. Oh, okay. okay, that's cool. Exactly. Okay. Which is not bad because then her eight hours is like three to four. Okay. And then, Preload start times are like what one a.m. It's like oh, one a.m. Like yeah. less than eight hours. Yeah. Just yeah, wait dude. till next week, which yeah. obviously we're recording early Sunday. But you know, next week after the you know it's the twenty seventh Cyber Monday now. and all yeah. that stuff. But after twenty yeah. seventh, we're really into peak, and they start starting at what twelve oh one. Yeah. I mean, at yeah. least we did back in the mm-hmm. day. Yeah. You they started this one time before the day. Yeah. There was there was a couple of days that started us at like eleven fifty, which was really? like. Yeah, and we're like, so how does this how does this pay work? Because it's technically a different day, and I know a lot of companies like to screw their guys by not giving them the right amount of overtime because, yeah, like, well, technically, like technically, technically you start the day before. It's, it's funny because if you did it, I probably did it. I, I don't remember starting that early. I, usually, it was twelve oh one just because it's usually of that twelve oh one because of that. But I know right? so there was a couple at days one because they don't yeah. want to pay you extra. They don't want to pay you the seventh day or sixth day, whatever. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, they started us at 12.01, and I know we would run into the guys leaving from Twilight because yeah. they'd still kind of be there. It's that was, that was like me as a car parker. Like, they would have <clears throat> us come in at 10 p.m. Sunday mm-hmm. night, and we would still be seeing Twilight. And we're like, okay, um, what are we doing here? And they're yeah. like, oh, just wait till for them to be done. I'm like, okay. <laughs> like, I have no problem with that. So it's just. Stand, I'll stand around. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, all right, you got to wait for that while you be done. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so a little bit of a tangent, right? But so we were talking about all this stuff, but seizing opportunities. I kind of wanted to touch on this. So what do you do? How long have you been involved in, in the safe, in safety? In safety, safety, I've just been involved for over a year, just over a year. And, you know, when, uh, well, wait, 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 sorry. That's, that's not right. Right. You no, it's just you over were, a year. So. Because Wadi you left last year first, but that's when you took co-chair. But you were on safety before that. Eh, two you months, were, maybe. Two months, not okay. too long. So about a year and a half, a little like bit, maybe. Yeah, a little bit more than. Let's a year. say that, like just just the tip. But. And I will say, look, you know, at the at the time frame, just because I was involved in in Joseph Center and Tustin Center, um, doing safety, 
Wadi had been the co-chair for a couple years after Ken Good left, right? So Wadi was the co-chair. Um, and then I didn't really want to take over the co-chair. Mm -hmm. um, this guy stepped up tremendously. Like I will say, you know, just you seizing the opportunities, like you said, um, you stepped into the role. You've done a great job. Uh, but what, what, what exactly do you do during safety? Like what, what is it you do? I come in early to make sure G. Shermis is all correct in the systems. And if there's any uh, emails, I check the emails from our division manager. If there's a Zoom call meetings that I have to attend, like sometime during the week, I make sure to prep before the meeting. And during the process, it's just a lot, a lot of planning for like three months. I have to plan three months ahead for <coughs> demos, safety demos. And wellness activities, like, you're well of that. Yeah, yeah. And then it's just a lot of thinking ahead just to see what we can do and how we can do better. Like, even whenever we have an injury or whenever we have an accident, then the very next day, oh, okay, let's change that. Let's update, see what we can do different and how we can make that, make the drivers more aware that, you know, injuries and accidents are not a joke or it's just it's it's a very serious matter no matter the severity of the injury or the accident you know it could be just a cut in the arm or a you know a bump into a, a, a vehicle or a sharp turn like any of these can be to the least severe to the most severe and okay. you know like tier threes you know no yeah. one wants to get in your tier three yeah we had a major tier three in in anaheim right in uh college center yep yeah, right, that was so yeah, that was, center? That was yeah, that very was eye opening. Uh, hit pedestrian. Shit. Yeah. yeah. And no one wants that on their conscience, right? Yeah. yeah. It's <clears throat> it's just but it's just as that's why we are professional drivers. Like we need to you know, speaking for myself, like we need to make sure we're following the safety methods. We're following the eight keys of lifting and lowering. We're following the five keys to preventing slips and falls. Like these are all here for a reason. Mm -hmm. And if we just follow them and stay aware of the possible dangers and hazards that are around us, then we can do our job safely. And that just goes for every driver. And no, uh, no matter how many like injuries or accidents within my center we may get, I still believe that we can do to the utmost like better and greatest like we've we've hit almost a year in injuries and i know we can do that again yeah. and i hope every center out there every building out there is thinking the same way and it's just like you said seizing the opportunity and i want to be there for the drivers uh safety wise um if they want to talk outside of work like i tell especially the new drivers i let them know every single time hey i'm only a phone call away i'm only a text away it doesn't matter. I don't care if you're in Vegas and you're drunk out of your mind or you have been, like, left by your homies or your, your chick or your lady. Like, I don't care if you're stranded. Like, give me a call. I will pick you up. And that's just me as a person. Not as a safety committee member. That's just me as a person outside of work. Like, yeah. my phone's always open. It's never silent. It's never off. And, you know, believe it or not, dude, when I, when I first started safety and this was – you know, like I said, I was on safety for like seven years, but when I, when I first started, it was really, safety was a joke. Mm -hmm. Safety was always looked at as, oh, you guys are management, you know, friends or management friendly. And one of the big things that I've done, at least in, in my building and, you know, and just kind of without, you know, helping Sawas and, and we've kind of taken on is to express to the safety committees that this is a union safety committee. And right. reason being is that we look out for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Management at the end of the day, they have numbers to, you know, to answer for. They have, yeah. uh, you know, production standards they have to hit. And, you know, of course. safety kind of goes out the window, you know, for peak and for all these things. And it's something that I, I really sought to, to change and change the face of safety where safety members at, you know, for a long time were looked at as, I don't know, dorks or or whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. you know and and it's just kind of something i took on to like look we're here for you guys like you know if you guys have safety concerns like real safety concerns like let's address them yeah. let's do them you know i know there was 
and that's why we have the safety meetings you know like once a month or every couple of weeks like we'll bring it to management for these reasons like hey these drivers have concerns like we need to address this or things could get possibly worse and that's one thing that i i will say that you know nick bruno coming in kind of uh showed me and, and that the safety committee number one is ours and that there was a certain process within the safety procedure that we needed to to follow right if we wanted right. things to be addressed seriously like where you know i i i think for a long time not only did the members not take us serious but as far as the safety committee but the members didn't really take us serious but management did, didn't take us serious either it was like you're yeah. here to do what we want you to do is you know that's how management looked at it and safety i mean uh, especially since they were the ones that were putting the safety members in that position. Yeah, exactly. it, was, it wasn't, yeah. it was never the union. And the then union the never members looked at it like, well, you guys are just management, yeah. you know, do goods or whatever they wanted to call it. Right. right. So when management could just wing, wave their hand, they'd be like, yeah. oh, we got no more safety committee. So now that, yes. that shit is kind of sailed and we've done a little bit to change the culture. So, yeah. I mean, even back then, I guess I was trying to change somewhat of the culture. I thought it was like the, the last kind of bastion of, of camaraderie that we had within the building because that kind of all went away but no i see what you're doing dude and i I appreciate it as a as an ex-safety member like i I really do appreciate the work that you do and the the mindset you take towards things like you said you do stuff you would do stuff on your own it's not about just about the safety and about you know the safety committee and this and that but it's it's about caring for people right and making sure people are safe and and understanding that some of the rules that, that they have implemented, like you said, the eight keys lifting and lowering and all this mm-hmm. stuff, those are, some of them are there for our safety. Right? Exactly. So it, there are methods that do help us. Um, obviously, mm-hmm. some of them are bullshit, but some of them do help us stay safe and, mm-hmm. right. and be able to do the job contact. for a long time. Right? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. even like outside of work, you know, those methods could be used. And it's, yeah. it's amazing how... You know, once you join UPS and you see all these methods, like if you try those methods outside of work, like using three points of contact, like the handrails, going upstairs, like even if you live in an apartment, like second, third, fourth story, what, however high you are, like using that handrail does make a big difference. It does make a difference. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I'm like, my knees are alive because of that. Like, oh my gosh. Like yeah. being on the route that I've been on now, like if I wasn't using that handrail, like I would be gone. And I don't know how... Fans that did that for oh, yeah, definitely the handrail years. helps. So like, um, I I find myself a lot now like scanning ahead when like I come up to lights now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's clearing a that's a big deal. Clearing the intersections. Yeah. Intersections. Clearing your intersections. Yeah, I definitely do that it, a lot. I, way more people run intersections than you think. Yeah. <laughs> Especially stop signs. Especially stop signs. Especially stop signs. So, talked about some safety. Got to know Joseph a little bit. I'm glad you came on. Like I said. Um, you know, let's jump into the next segment. I want to um, talk about uh, just really, we're just going to go over really quick that uh, OCCA is still in negotiations. Yes. Uh, we can't really cover too much on that because they're still at the table and there's not a huge update on that, unfortunately. Not they, yet. Not um, yet. It seems like they, they definitely have had some movement in the right direction. They're just not where the company's not budging. So yet. it's like we, they're still at the table. So, yeah. so we'll see. We shall see. We could, you know, and we're going to get strike. somebody. We we're going to get somebody from the from the OCTA on here eventually. To probably after everything's done at the tables, so that we no one's speaking out of place. Yeah. You know, and then we can have a, yeah, a good course. conversation there. And yeah, a great update. One. You know, maybe and hear it from the horse's mouth. Hey, what's going on? Yeah. All right. Oh, well, we're still kind of on the topic of uh, UPS, uh, the electric bikes. Oh, shit. How are they utilizing the electric bikes over there with you guys? What electric bikes? They aren't. <laughs> what electric bikes? So just so you know, uh, it, the way it was kind of uh, proposed to myself, right, as, as the business agent, obviously we aren't operating in that capacity, but the way it was proposed to myself. Do you have stuff in there? Uh, Yeah, the way it was proposed to myself is that um, there, it's a pilot program. Um, they they want to use electric bikes, and I think it's more for a visual, for kind of like that. Uh, they want to show everybody, hey, UPS is using these electric bikes, getting away from 
let or moving more towards a carbon neutral footprint or whatever. That's fine. Well, I'm is, a, it I'm for, a, I'm is it for <clears throat> delivering or like getting to work? Like for delivery. It's for delivery. So check this really? out. So this is how they're utilizing. <laughs> so believe it or not, I did check and I, I called some other people, uh, you know, around around the West. Um, in Portland, I know they do have two of them. No way. The way they're utilizing them, they say they're connected to a route. So the driver actually takes his truck, um, loads up on a trailer, the bike, and the pods. It comes with, like, these little pods that, that attach to the back of the bike, like trailers. What? And they'll go park the truck, and they're not using the so truck. So are they, with the are they taking an attached official UPS trailer to the, w- attached with their car with those pods in the trailer? Yes. Okay. So the, those. So they're getting a bonus just for that. Yes. Yeah, so itself. they're getting the money yeah. to uh, tow the trailer. Number one, right? You always get forty. I think it's forty cents. Forty cents extra to um, to tow the trailer. Then they're delivering from the bike, which obviously we know, and I think they know that it's less efficient. Mm-hmm. In some areas it works. Some areas it doesn't. But um, yeah. they're trying yeah. to get it to where. I think they're just kind of trying to show everybody that, hey, we're being. Uh, I understand that they're trying to be mm-hmm. environmentally conscious and using electric bikes, but I mean, they also have they have electric golf carts. We can use those. Those yeah. are more efficient. They're safer. Can you imagine being hit by a vehicle on a on a bike as opposed yeah. to like a golf cart? Which is one of the things I brought up, especially with a trailer. Like, so we we had the regular bikes, not electric bikes. We actually tried that one year. We had a couple drivers that mm-hmm. would do that. Um, we had some P, uh, some helpers that would would uh, drive bikes as well. Um, we had one one guy who drove a bike, a driver. Um, we kind of just drive his route out there, and they had a little trailer, a tiny trailer, you know, like on the back of the bike, and he would load up some packages, you know, fifteen twenty packages, and go kind of deliver resi in that little area. Um, this one is bigger. The trailer is much bigger. It holds, you know, 50 to 100 it's, But it's still, it's kind of unstable, though, because it's like, it's it's skinny and tall. So it's, and it has my those. Thing, my it thing has I'm those. I'm kind of thinking is like, okay, I get it's a bike. I get your tone of trailer. I get your tone packages. But what about for the drivers who have to go, like, out of reach for their destination? Like, are are they just taking streets? Like, no, no, no. So, so it's just... That's you what know, I'm for just the thinking. bike thing, it's it's literally just like they would have you deliver a really dense area, whatever that would be, whether it be business, like in New York, mm-hmm. it might make sense. It makes that, sense. That I totally and like a metropolitan, you know, city, it makes a lot of sense because there's not a lot of places to park. Literally, police officers will follow you know the UPS guy and give him a ticket at every stop because they're parking like in the red or they're double parking. There's no place yeah. to park, so it makes sense from that standpoint to put like a bike or another type of electrical vehicle where they can they can squeeze into a spot mm-hmm. and make their delivery. As but to this being, is like you actually tow the the bike out, tow the trailers out, and you you load up the trailers. And, and these trailers are kind of like it's kind of like. Um, <clears throat> It's, it looks like one of those, like, like, uh, like something you would transport, like, musical equipment in. It's really tall, oh, skinny. Oh, I know exactly what you're You know, it has about. those bullshit universal, like, yeah. wheels that are, like, really small and narrow. And I already had a driver talk about, like, it almost fell over because he hit, like, a lip. Because he, he was trying to go on a sidewalk. He's technically not supposed to do that. But he was trying to, like, get onto a sidewalk. And the, the uneven pavement, the whole thing almost fell over. So it's like, let's say... A driver doesn't try to get on the sidewalk, but they right. hit some uneven pavement or a pothole. That whole thing's in a flip. See, I'm just thinking, like, especially in those on those certain routes where it's just nothing but construction. Like, the streets are just so bad. Like, how would that work? Like, yeah, it's and just, I think it, it's really they're trying to utilize it in places where it's not like that. They're trying to use like, utilize it in really dense either metropolitan or mm-hmm. residential areas where they can just park the vehicle, park the but truck. Still, that still seems like, it still seems like something that a driver shouldn't do. And it's like mm-hmm. a driver can take out, you know, the trailer, drop the pod and then drop the, the bike with like a helper and be like, Hey, this is you. I'm going to go deliver some stuff. I'll meet you in an hour. It doesn't make sense for a driver to do the work. Yeah. It yeah. literally when does they can not. just do it themselves and they can do it themselves in their package car. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's like we've been doing for. I, I agree. Know, yeah. Like I said, I think it's just more of a of the visual aspect of things. Like 
Show that, I mean, I, 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 I like the direction they're trying heading with trying neutral. to be carbon yeah, neutral and environmentally friendly. I get that. That's awesome. But it's like now we need also need to be functional. So it's like we not just we need to change the mindset to just not just being carbon friendly, but also functional. So it's like those two things need to meet. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Somewhere, they right? need to meet in the middle. Because like, well, like, I mean, like we, we said before, the... like all it just takes that one thing to mess everything else. One accident. Yeah. One injury, and and I assume it would be a major accident. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it's funny yeah. the way it was presented to me is that it's going to cause less accidents. So this is, I said, yeah, but the ones you do have are going to be, be fatal, fucking horrible. Yeah, they're going to be right? fatal because you you got a guy unprotected maybe on a bike wearing a helmet on a fucking bike, possibly you know? wearing a vest. I mean, the I mean, let's be honest. We talked about these vests that they give these guys. They're dog shit vests that are not reflective in any way. So, like, they're, they're not visible. Now when you know? they're covered in fucking dust. Yeah, yeah. they're not visible. <laughs> and then some neighborhoods are just pitch black. They're, like, there really is no lights. Mine, like, I've mine, been I work out in Laguna Beach. There's no lights out there. Yeah. There's no know. lights out there. Yeah. Kind of dangerous. So, that you know. I don't know. That's interesting. Yeah. It's we'll, an we'll interesting see where topic. They go. Yeah. But, you know, in the vein of the carbon neutral footprint thing, we, I think we it's a step in the try, right direction. We did try the the hybrid trucks, right? And those yeah. are fucking garbage. Yeah. I'm sorry. No, no, I, those those suck. One to, <laughs> you drove a hybrid? No suck. I have parked you know. those ones. I've parked them. I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The bounce. Fuck, stop. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> dude, when you're trying to step on the brake oh and it's like gosh. it's still going, you're going like backwards. What and you have to warm fuck? it up for like ten minutes and like. Mm. Are you warm? Oh, you gotta, you gotta get, build the pressure up, and you're like yeah. fucking gassing it. It's like, oh. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah it's interesting. No, I've, I've never heard of that. Garbage. And it's yeah. funny because they they have electric vehicles, but the problem is, is we don't have infrastructure to run those yet. So no. it's like oh, they need no. to build stuff for that. I'm down for driving an electric vehicle yeah. as long as they have the right infrastructure and it does. It'll work for ten to twelve hours, yeah. but the trucks don't even last that long. No. I think the fucking electric truck only lasts like six. So it's like. I, I don't know. I never drove an all electric, but, it, you know, I know they, they've tried a couple different things, right? They, they had them posted out front gas, of my building for a while. They were like, it was kind of like the poster boy the right out front. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the hybrids were garbage. The hybrids air brakes dog on shit. them were dog shit. fucking horrible. Yeah, and then sick. you try to go, like, if you need to actually move, like, hey, I got to get out in traffic or whatever. You s- step on the gas. Doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> Even even the newer oh, trucks fuck. do that. Like not even hybrids. Like even the newer trucks, the brand new trucks. I'll like step on the gas in like three seconds. There, I'm like, yeah. what? <laughs> like I'm trying to go, man. Maybe they have them disguise their hybrids. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah they have the. Well, they use so many different companies, and like I think the most successful out of all those would probably be the workhorse. The workhorse is yes. like a very good, yeah, good truck. Those yeah. are very solid, and like the small ones, small, like the T six hundred, and they, and they like drove. The they drove the way you needed them in, Actually, like for response time. You know, like there was a couple routes that had the Fords. Those are nice too. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, those, not those, are nice those, yeah. Are nice those are nice too. Those are good. You step ones. on those and you go. Yeah, that's the thing. You some people fucking need that. Like I, I like, mine didn't have a governor. Mm. I remember what route it was. I don't want to say her name, but it was on somebody's route, and I would. Drive that truck. You already gave no away governor. too much by saying her. I could go 80, 80 miles an hour in that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> when it didn't so have a speed limit off. lock on yeah. it. <laughs> it didn't have a governor. So I was took like, the restrictor plate oh, off. It's not exactly street <laughs> legal, so it's keep it on the down low. Oh, good times. Good times. Good but anyways, um, next segment, I guess. Uh, the I next segment is actually bikes. termination stories. So I know we oh, brought this shit. up last week. Here Ooh. we go. And, this is going to be fun. And... Uh, Sabas isn't here, so we'll get his termination story. Oh, he doesn't have any, huh? No, he does. Yeah, does he? Uh, I heard he was I trying heard, to be like, I've never been fired, John. Yeah. <laughs> I did, I did. <laughs> hey, a little bit about Sabas. Fuck you, Sabas. <laughs> fuck you. Okay. <laughs> I know you're dealing with some stuff right now, but fuck you. Right. Anyways, so. Uh, my termination story, I, th- I think yours are funnier just because we kind of went over them a little bit, but my termination story is this, right? So I'm working in the hub. I don't remember what year it was, what, you know, how long I was there, but I was there for quite a while. They had already brought in the scanners. So PALS, right. believe it or not, Bluetooth, when I started, yeah. they didn't have PALS. Oh. No, it was, all, it was all it was code. It was all by zip code. Zip code. <clears throat> yeah. Interesting. 
zip code and then you loaded when you loaded you loaded by um by a load chart right mm-hmm. they had a yeah. chart yeah, yeah. so they had it was a, a chart you had to follow a lot different right so i was in the unload at the time and i was we had scanned i was pretty good at scanning and slapping that new power hey, hey, there. take it easy there um, take it easy yeah, there guy whoa so <laughs> go. um I who was, was the best was who was the best it. over there me it was me <laughs> Fuck. totally me I, I mean, they didn't they didn't even want me to unload anymore because I was so good at scanning. But anyway, <laughs> they stuck me in the air building and I'm unloading with this guy and he's fucking shit scanner. Right. So I'm like kind of he's he's being lazy. A lot of the stuff was coming on my side. I'm that build like, that the, especially in Anaheim, the belt is so wide for the yeah. air, building. <laughs> air, air building. right? So we're, we're yeah. scanning across from each other. And I'm like, you're fucking being a dick because you're slow. And I'm scanning and I'm like kind of trying to. Even the flow out a little bit. Yeah. This guy got all fucking butt hurt, and it, you know it's obviously another Teamster member, so I don't want to talk too much shit on the guy. But yeah, fuck the guy him. was getting pissed, and he was saying some shit, and we were saying some shit, and then he threw a fucking box at me. Oh, Shut the fuck up! I swear to you, we're across the fucking air building thing, and he fucking throws a box at me. And that's not I fucking had cool, a, dude. Um, a supervisor there, a full time soup. <laughs> Um, by the name of Phil, if you guys know him, oh man, yeah, we don't need to say we his won't last say name. His name. All you got to hear is the first name. You're like, if we know who that is. Um, <laughs> he was kind of a dick, but you know, we were fairly cordial. Um, this guy throws a box at me, and I'm not gonna lie. I'm, I'll tell the truth. I told Phil, like, look, Phil, you either fire this guy, discipline him in some way, or I'm gonna fuck him up. Because I was pissed. Mm. I was like, you, you're not going to throw a box at me and get away with it. But I didn't want to get fired. I think at the time I had probably been there for six years or so, seven years. So I was like, you need to take care of this. You need to handle this. So they pulled us both in the office, um, do a little preliminary interview, whatever. No big deal. They fired both of us. Wow. Right? This guy is fucking bawling his eyes out. We're in the office together. He's crying. I'm like, fuck you, <laughs> right? You threw a box at me, and now you're crying? Yeah, come on, And man. he's crying. It's it's literally the week before Thanksgiving. <laughs> Damn. Right? So, or I should say it's the week of Thanksgiving. We are in You're in that holidays, week. You're right? in that so week, I'm yeah. Like, I don't give a fuck. Like, I was, you know, I was young. I, I, di- I really didn't care. This guy had pissed me off, and if they were going to fire me, I was pissed anyways. So they do their interview see what happened i told him you know we we you know we kind of had some differences but he made it physical mm. right so if yeah if you want to allow that i said i'm i'm not going to stand for it i'm i'm pissed of you need to take care of it and at the time I, I i'll be honest i was like you need to fire the guy because he well there's no reason him. to get physical, he got, he got physical. Oh, there's never a reason never, to get physical of course yeah. i never made it physical right so and they they took my threat telling the manager that if he didn't fire him that I was going to fuck him up. Like, they took that as me threatening him. So they fired me as well, right? So they fired me. Um, they say That's taken out of context, they say, though. You're That's done. some horse shit. Yeah. You're done. Um, you know, give me your, your ID. Go ahead and walk out. They didn't have anybody walk me out. It was like you hadn't done anything yet. That's literally, I, I that's all words. <laughs> yeah. So this guy is crying. Like you said, out of context. He's crying yeah. his eyes out. Fucking and I I mean I hope you still work there. If you do, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> anyway. I hope you watch the yeah. show and then fuck you. <laughs> so this guy's you know exactly who you are. <laughs> I, I leave. I'm like, fine. Do you need to fire me? Fire me. So I left. They fired me. They took my ID. I walked out to the building. Uh, or I walked out of the building. I'm I'm literally I, I walk out, you know, of the pedestrian door right by the mm-hmm, big bay yep. door in the front. Yeah, right? So yeah, I yeah. walk out and I'm walking across the bay door and I hear, Anton! Anton! And I'm like, what the fuck is going on? What 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 now? Mm-hmm. I just got fired. Yeah, of course. I'm just like, what what do you want? Right? So I, I turn around and it's fucking Phil, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, he's like, get back here. Oh my gosh. I'm like, what the fuck? Okay, so I, I go back and Anyways, long story short, they bring us back in there. He's still up there crying. So I'm like, okay. So, so basically they're walking you out, and he's and been he's crying. The, he's been crying the <laughs> whole time. Hilarious. And they're like, they're like, no one wants to touch him. They're like, you, you fucking go. Yeah. 
<laughs> you, you, so you're he's free. up there. He's, he never Just left. This guy he never here. left the office. He's there crying. <laughs> I had left. Um, they bring me back in. They sit us both down. He's obviously sitting across from me because I'm still irritated. Um, but he's like, "We don't want to fire you over the holidays. Oh my God. We don't want you to, you know, lose your job over the holidays. So we're gonna bring you guys back if you guys both agree that you guys will be fucking." You know, cordial or whatever, and I'm like, I don't fucking care. Like, I, 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 I was over it. At I the was time. like, dude, I was just ready to get I'm fine. But just <laughs> don't have him throw any boxes at me. Like, yeah, we're good. Put him someplace else. He sucks. So, so they, <laughs> they gave me my job back. <laughs> they gave me my job back. It didn't honestly thank thank God it didn't take any union uh, intervention, right? But they gave me my job. So back. it was 100. percent It was like the management that did that. Yes, I was fired for oh. five minutes. Five. That's that's how I always put it. Damn, I was fired for all the five minutes. Uh, but it, you know, it was a, it was an eye opening experience to kind of see that. Look, management wasn't on your side. Whether you know, I thought I was in the right because I didn't do anything to the guy. Right. He threw a box at me, and that's how it went. So I, I really didn't think I had done anything to deserve being fired. But it was kind of my. I don't first, think so either. One of my eye opening yeah. events, and it, I've had a couple. But one of my eye-opening events that kind of showed that management doesn't give a fuck about me. No, nah. they don't care. They don't care about you. They don't. They are just there. As to the saying goes, as the saying goes, it's you're just bodies. Exactly. You know, it's just you're just you're another just a number. They'll, yeah, so that they'll, was that was my another... termination story. I think we should move on to the funny ones. From oh. what I understand. Let's, okay, let's so hear George's. I got two. I've been fired twice from UPS. Uh, first year, uh, I miss ninety-six days in one year. So 96 days. That's a lot of days. That's amazing and how you <laughs> 365. Here's wow. why here's why they they waited till the 96 day. Okay. I was the number one scanner and unloader in my my building. <sighs> there you go. So I'm going to go ahead and call I can see bullshit. that. You can. <laughs> you can. I was probably better. I'm not going to lie. No. You weren't. <laughs> no, but it's, you it's weren't. fine. But it's fine. Okay. okay. It's fine. We're going to have a fucking unload contest. <laughs> You guys are going to watch him. You're going to watch him. You're going to watch him lose. You're going to watch him lose. But uh, that's literally, literally wise because like I was really good at what I did. Okay. I was really good at unloading. I was in probably the best at scanning. I was. And the only other person I think <laughs> that was better would be Hiro from. Uh, I think he worked in the. Him. Yeah. He's in college center now. Oh, is he? He's a driver. Okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he was. Uh, he, I think he worked in the '60s. I think at the yeah. time. And uh, he was the only other, the only other scanner that was fucking like next level good at scanning, other than John. Apparently, you know, come on. Yeah. <laughs> John was pretty good though. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not John was pretty good. Doing the air building scanning <laughs> with you, no. motherfucker. Yes. <laughs> but and this guy would be like, "What's up, poor Hizzle?" Whatever. The- <laughs> yeah. Good times. But I missed 96 days in one year. That's and then, insane. like, they brought me into the office, and they're like, hey, uh, we're going to have to fire you, basically, for missing three months worth of work. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, only three months? I can make it another three. And I was like, want. man, I guess that it is what it is. I'm not going to argue that mm. I did call in yeah. three months, you yeah. know? So I was like, cool. Wash my hands of it. And then, uh, you know who actually got my job back was not a union steward, was not a, a supervisor, it was actually... Manny, Manny got my job back. Really? He, he talked to Phil, convinced him, you know, that I'm a good employee, all this stuff. And prom, Manny promised him, didn't even ask me first. He promised him that I wouldn't fucking do that again. Shout out to Manny Rivera. Shout out <laughs> to Manny Rivera. <laughs> Manny got my job back. So that's my first, Woo! first being fired my, my, in my, in year one. Uh, year one. <laughs> Second time, I think this was like four years later. Uh, I'm now work. I'm uh, you know a seasoned vet now, and like uh, we do a lot of unloading shorties. Like at the end of the day, like like uh, air that would come from Ontario mm. in the '40s, right? In the, in yeah, the, in the yeah, unload I, door I at the '40s, so they would bring air, and we would unload all that air, and it'd be like seven o'clock, seven to seven thirty, and whatnot. And now they would usually put a very strong team there. So it was like me, Manny would be there, uh, Ryan would be there, and yeah, we had a we had a, a supervisor who's yeah. actually this is <laughs> this is a very integral really part of this story is that the supervisor that was running that area at the time, 
He's a very close friend of mine. Oh, nice. Very close friend of mine. Who is it? Am I allowed to say? Are you allowed to I'll, say? I'll bleep it out. It was I'll more, bleep it out. It was, it was, oh, uh, oh, yeah. I'll bleep you it don't, out. You don't even have to say. I know. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. it's. Yeah. I'll bleep it out. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> and uh, so we unload the fucking, the, the Wally, and I'm walking out, and I'm bringing the belt in. And then when walks up, he's like, cool, man. And I'm like, hey, there's a package in the back. Can you go grab it for me? And I missed it. I'm just fucking with him, you know? And, like, he walks to the back, and then I just slam the fucking door behind him. No. <laughs> no. no. So, nice. I've done this before <laughs> with him. Like, it was a joke. We, I've done this before with him, like, in the 53-footers, mm-hmm. right? Because you yeah. need to actually physically lock those. Oh, wow. And yeah. then put the, the lock on it. Wallies are a little bit different. Yeah. They lock automatically. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, they do. Yes, they, they do. <laughs> there are some that need to They yep. lock uh, automatically. Yes, Didn't think that through. Mm-hmm. So he's locked in there. I'm laughing. <laughs> laughing, laughing, laughing. Oh, man. He's trying to get out. And so I go to open it. I'm like, it's not opening. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get you out, man. I'm it's sorry. It's not opening. Keys. You tell us what you're doing. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? So, Jobs walks up and fucking, he's like, Ooh, what's going on? Mike. And we're like, oh, we need keys for this, this fucking Wally. I, I, I locked him in there. <laughs> he's like, what did you do? And I'm like, I, as a joke, I locked him in. I'm still laughing. I'm like, <laughs> I'm, I haven't stopped laughing this whole yeah. time. And so, Jobs turns. Beat red. You've seen him when he gets oh, mad. Yeah. Oh, he yeah. is red and yelling Military at me. Guy. Oh, and he is fucking screaming. The hey, veins man, in his head are Military about to guy. burst. And I'm just laugh. I can't stop laughing. I, I live for the life of me. Could not stop laughing, right? And so what happens is they have to go get some. They have to go get the guy who brought the truck. I forgot his name. I think it was Ernie at the time. So they had to go get him. He's in the break room and shit. <laughs> they go get his keys. <laughs> get his keys. <laughs> they open him up. They let him piss. He's not even talking to me. I'm dying. I'm still fucking laughing. I'm like fucking at the time. I'm basically just lying on the fucking grating laughing. Like, <laughs> and fucking Jobs is losing it, dude. Losing it. I, oh, I yeah. swear. Would, I thought he was going to have a stroke. <laughs> it was he bad. He would lose it quite a bit. It was bad. So uh, they basically take me up to the office and they're just like, they're like, what if he had like uh a fear of being, you know, trapped in... in oh, uh, claustrophobic. Uh, if you, what if he was claustrophobic? Like, you would have triggered his phobia and whatnot. Like, he he could have had a mental breakdown, you know? And I was mm. like, I, you know, I didn't take into consideration. I was like, he's a friend of mine, and I was just playing a, a playful joke. And yeah. they're like, and then they're like, that's not acceptable. So they fired me. And then um, Sonny. Sonny was the one who fought my case. You know, I, I explained the situation. You know, he talked to me. He talked to separately he got the stories together he realized that yeah. we are both friends it was a you joke. know and it was a joke that was not cool obviously <laughs> and it took about a week but i got my job back oh, nice. you know and then like literally the next day from what i heard is that like they had a pcm on if you get stuck in one of those wallies there's actually a release button inside the wally oh. so if you're facing if you're facing the door to the left, there's a little hole with the cutout, and you push that switch, opens the door. No way. Yep. What? It's always been there. It's a, it's a safety release. But, I mean, nobody nobody knew. None of us knew that. Yeah. So, like, literally. He didn't know that. I was the, <laughs> he didn't know it either. I was the one that triggered that, and then fucking they pushed that forward ever since. So, yeah. And I'm just hearing that now. So, obviously, they still haven't pushed yeah, that. Yeah, you're going to have to bring <laughs> that to the safety committee. I mean, that, I mean, that was probably, like, 12 years ago, so, yeah. yeah. A long time ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a very long yeah. time ago. That's that a happened. cool story. Been some time. Been some time. Yeah, it's yeah. funny. You, you talk about your hundred and what, 146 days you called in? 96. 96. 96. Oh, okay. That's well, insane. I, I mean, I was kind of on the same boat. I, I did get taken to at least a five-day. I, I went to a five-day suspension, but I never got oh, wow. You know what's crazy is, like, I probably could have fought that because – they didn't give me any punishment. No warning letter, like nothing. It was just like one day, like 
bro, you've been gone for three months. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, really? Like, three do we months. Need to, you know, <laughs> well, yeah. That's a long fucking time, dude. Do, do we need to give you anything? <laughs> like, do we like, need mm-hmm. to issue the discipline? Because, I mean, you've been gone for 96. You called in 96 times. <laughs> yeah. Fucking awesome. There's only 365 days in the year. Yeah. We're like, <laughs> 96, 96 of them. You called in. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. So. Good stuff. Good termination stuff. stories, right? I mean, I think a lot of us have them. If you've been there long enough, you've at least had some discipline Had some or stories, heard some right? fun ones. Yeah. So if, yeah. You've, if you guys have heard some fun stories that you can talk about and if you need to uh, oh, have okay. some stuff censored, let us know. And then I have a fun one would love to hear that those. we can talk about. Um, oh, yeah. I won't say any names. So you I can used, say names. I'll bleep them out. So I used to do the pickoff, high pickoff, like, like yeah. uh, Joseph was saying, right? I used to do high pickoff. And no one ever bugged you. You went up there and you oh, were yeah, there you were fine. all day. No yeah. one Nobody ever, wanted like, to go up would, there. They would yeah. look up there and say, hey, you good? We're good. Yeah. Right? So <laughs> before I took that job, the guy who had it before me, um, apparently he was upset. And uh, I will say, if you have children, plug their ears. Um, <laughs> this, guy, this guy got upset and uh, shit in a tote. Oh, yeah. no. sent it down the line. Oh, no. Yes. Bro. He shit in a tote. And I, think I, I think I know who you're talking about. The line. Oh, my um, God. It was, uh, yeah. I, oh, I won't get too specific because, you know, I don't know if he still works. I mean, I don't think he still works there. But anyways, I think that was probably one of his termination <laughs> stories uh, because he. Uh, That's insane. He wasn't happy. And he sent it down, and apparently it kind of made a little bit of a mess. Uh, hazard. Made a little bit of a mess. <laughs> hazmat. Yeah. That's a hazmat. That was a right hazmat. There. I'm sure that. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know if that would be covered. <laughs> hazmat upon hazmat. Speaking yeah. of gross hazmats as well, not to go off on a tangent, but I've had some gross ones. I don't know about you guys. I mean, yeah. we had one guy that was shipping a uh, deer carcass. To a termodax, uh, taxidermy. Taxidermy. Excuse me, taxidermy. Yeah. Um, and uh, it smelled what fucking horrible. Uh, oh. Fucking horrible. We had a box of uh, we had a box of like those sterile pigs that they would use for like biology. Yeah. Break open one time. Mm. That was pretty rough. Well, we have that. Um, so we have the uh, Medtronic. Yep. Right, we have the Medtronic delivery pig hearts. that is pig hearts. Yeah, so and every those day. are ice chests, every day. full of ice, right? And like if a bunch. every now and then yeah. they'll get left over. over oh, the so weekend. is that like uh, they use those for like uh, heart valves and stuff for transplants? Exactly. Yeah. So they take the they take the heart valves out of them, and those, believe it or not, if you have a a valve transplant, most likely it's a pig heart. Yeah, it's usually pig. Yeah, yeah, bovine yeah. shit. That's every day we see them. Yeah, it's a, it's a trip every time. They're the most compatible with us, so it makes sense. Pigs. We're pigs. <laughs> We're pigs. Anyway, so <laughs> let's let's move on. Next segment. All right. Well, cheers, everybody. Um, happy Sunday uh, for us. Obviously, you probably will see this on Friday. So happy Friday. But, happy fucking uh, Friday. You know, we'll, we'll just wrap it up. We appreciate you guys uh, tuning in. Thank you, Joseph. Oh, of course, for coming on. Uh, hopefully, we can have you on. I, it was a fun. Fun segment. Right? Oh, no, fun, I loved uh, it. Episode. It was a fun episode. Um, like I said, uh, we just appreciate all the views. We appreciate all, all the support. Um, you know, please like, smash the like button, subscribe, share. That's like the number one thing for me. Especially share with the other union members. Like, we're the whole, we've mentioned this before. This is not political. This is 100% informative. And also, it's a good time. We just sit here and yeah. just shoot the shit for. We're just having a, a good time. Having a good time. And uh, hopefully, you guys can listen while you're on the truck. I know myself, when I was on the truck, I would listen to podcasts all day long. I That's had literally all I did. Earphones do. in. As soon as I got to my resi where I didn't have to talk to anybody, just kind of go in. In the zone, as I called it, and we just, I just listened. I definitely look like a lunatic, because sometimes I'll laugh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a lot. I'm sure you're on ring cameras, just laughing for no reason. Look like a fucking psychopath. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, those ring cameras kind of always scared me, too. I'd be on conversations with you yeah. know, other drivers, and I'm like, oh, shit. They've made, that a th- they've, made that, <laughs> they've made that such a thing now. They're like, oh, when you walk up to the door, just make sure you don't, you're not in the middle of a conversation. Just say UPS, and you're good. Inappropriate. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. I'm it's sure. Like, well, fuck, dude. Some people like they need to like talk during 
like when they're working because they can't do it after work, you know. Yeah. Or they can't hold the phone, you know, they're Yeah, driving. so they have like That's an earpiece in and stuff. So I always have yeah. my earpiece in, but uh, like I said, we appreciate you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Um, obviously, we're we're trying to put these out every week. Hopefully, you guys enjoy um, and uh, make us part of your life. We appreciate you. Cheers. Thank you very much. Yeah. Also, you can reach Cheers. us at uh, ocst.000 at gmail.com. And off uh, the clock shop talk. Off the clock shop talk. I said it. Yeah, he did. Say it five times. No. <laughs> um, oh, you know what I can't say five times? Fuck you, Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, check us out in the in the description below uh, for the audio versions of this podcast in case you, know, you can't physically watch it. Yeah. Um, and I've been meaning to ask Joseph this question. What's up? What, what is that? A, that's a metal. Is that a metal? Behemoth. Behe- I was going to say it, look, it looks is. like behemoth. Yep. But I was like, is. I had to ask because like metal is like so very particular when they when when they do the with the their lettering. fonts with the font. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm cool. glad someone noticed. <laughs> cool. I like it. I like it. Oh, thank you. All right. Thank Until you. Until next time. Thank you for tuning in. Cheers. 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 Cheers.